What was I thinking? Hello, how you doing? It's Phil Thatch, and today I want to talk to you about my purchase of the Sony 200-600 f5.6-6.3 to G lens. It's an internal zooming super telephoto lens at a very reasonable price in my opinion. But why in the world would I buy this lens? I don't even own a Sony camera. I've been doing photography and kind of bird photography for about 12 or 13 years now. And I started out, didn't have a clue what I was doing, but eventually I learned how to do it fairly good. And during those 12 or 13 years, I've kind of learned that what I like is an APS-C camera for bird photography, a crop sensor camera. And I like a lens like this. I like um, a first party manufactured zoom lens. This is the Nikon 200 to 500, which is a lens I don't think I'll ever get rid of, even though I don't shoot F mount cameras very much anymore. But this is kind of what I like. Now I had, I experimented and bought a super expensive 500 millimeter F4. And man, that thing was so huge and so heavy. And I mean, it was awesome, don't get me wrong, but really I do better with a zoom lens. So just in case I get close to the subject, I'm ready for it. Of course, I pay a sacrifice, maybe a tiny bit in sharpness, and definitely these, these, uh, these super zooms don't let in as much light as an F4 prime, but they're a lot less expensive. And because I'm not investing huge amounts of money in those super primes, I can experiment a lot and I can experiment with multiple brands. So I've discovered that you need three things, or I kind of look for three things in my APS-C bird setup. And those three things are a great lens like this. This is a great lens for bird photography, inexpensive, uh, great range. I also need a great camera body. And for years, my great camera body for that was the Nikon D500. It went great with this 200 to 500 lens and it was really good. But now they've got this thing called bird eye detect autofocus and this camera doesn't have it. And really Nikon doesn't have it in an APS-C body. Uh, now, sometimes I do use this little Nikon Z50, which I love this little camera. Uh, sometimes I do use it for bird photography, but it doesn't have that eye detect autofocus. So that's what led me, just wanting eye detect autofocus led me to, to invest in some Canon gear. And at that time, Canon didn't have eye detect autofocus in an APS-C camera, but they do now. And here is my Canon 100 to 500, which if you watch the channel very much, you've seen Heather and I both use these quite a bit. Then they came out with the R7, which is, has great bird eye detect autofocus on this little lens. Super awesome lens because it's so small, so compact. But for years I've also been looking at this lens and have thought, wow, what a, what a great lens. This is the Sony 200 to 600 f5.6 to 6.3. It zooms internally so its size doesn't change, which that's a good thing and a bad thing as I'll tell you a little later. But what Sony didn't have was a really great APS-C bird eye detect camera. I mean, I guess maybe the 6600 or the 6400 might qualify for that. But when they announced the 6700, which uh, has been announced, and my name is at the very top of the waiting list at a camera store that I do a lot of business with, it has their new AI chip, which is an artificial intelligence chip designed specifically for bird, human, train, plane, automobile, autofocus. It's supposed to be really, really great. Sony's uh, bird eye detect autofocus has been really great for a few years, but this chip is supposed to make it even better. And now they're releasing it in a APS-C camera, which is what I like, and a really great price, $13.99 for a camera with that technology. So that's why I bought this lens. I'm, I'm on the waiting list for the A6700. I don't think it will be here until 
hopefully very early August, but it might be late August. Surely it's not going to be September. I'm going to have to wait. But the reason why I went ahead and bought this lens is because it was on sale for hundred dollars off. Cause I was thinking this lens has been out for about four years and I've had my eye on it that whole time, but it's, it's 1999, which is fantastically cheap. This thing's $28.99. I, I got it for $26.99 and they've raised the price to $28.99. And every once in a while they put the Canon 100 to 500 on sale for $26.99, which is what I paid for it full price. But this thing's $19.99 and they had it on sale $100 off. So I paid $18.99 for it. I was thinking about getting a used one of these and you can get a used one for about $17.89 in like new condition, but I figured for $110 more, I might as well get a brand new one while it's on sale. But if it wasn't on sale, I probably would have bought that used one. Cause like I say, these have been around a while. So there are several used ones on the market pretty much all the time. So now you know why I bought the 200 to 600. I, I want to try this lens out with that new camera and see if it's any better than the R7 and the 100 to 500. And then, you know, I'll have things to compare and contrast and then I'll kind of have to figure out which system I like better for which situation, which might be interesting to you as a viewer of this channel. And of course, I also am on the waiting list for the new Nikon 180 to 600, which I'll be picking that up. The only trouble with that lens is so far, you know, you've got the Z50 or the ZFC or the Z30 or the APS-C camera bodies that I could put that 180 to 600 on. Of course, remember, I like APS-C for bird photography. I know I could get a Z8 or a Z9 and probably be very happy, but I, I prefer APS-C for bird photography. Uh, I know opinions vary on that, but that's what I like. So now that we know why I want to get this lens, let's talk about what it feels like just holding on to it and seeing it. You know, I was thinking that it would feel a little bit more premium than it actually feels. It, I mean, it don't get me wrong, it feels really nice, but it just doesn't have a, a super premium feel, which I guess that's why it's a G lens instead of a G master lens. But it does have some buttons that can be programmed. I, I've had lenses with buttons that can be programmed before, I never use them. The focus throw is super small, less than a quarter of a turn to go from 200 to 600. So that's really awesome. And it's interesting to me also because Nikon lenses go clockwise to zoom and Canon lenses go counterclockwise to zoom. So which way does Sony go? Do they, do they zoom like a Nikon or do they zoom like a Canon? Well, they zoom like a Nikon. There's 200 millimeters clockwise to 600. So my muscle memory is going to be all over the place after shooting with nothing but Nikon for years and years. It took me a while to get used to zooming backwards on the Canon. And now I'll be going back to zooming like a Nikon, but don't, don't fret. If you're a Canon fan, there's still going to be plenty of Canon content on this channel, but it will be supplemented with some Sony content as well. So it zooms like a Nikon. The tripod collar is, is nice. I wish it was, because this lens is fairly light. It, it, weighs, it weighs less than this lens by just a little bit and a pretty good bit more than the 100 to 500. And the 100 to 500, you can remove the tripod collar completely. And I wish that was the case with this. Now you can remove the foot and it's kind of, honestly, it's kind of a clunky mechanism <clears throat> that I worry will probably eventually get loose and wobbly. Uh, it just has that feel. It's got a nice collar that can be loosened and rotated. I wish it clicked into place when you got to, to perfectly horizontal or perfectly vertical, but it doesn't, but that's okay. That's, I mean, that's not a big deal. It's got four switches on it, autofocus, manual focus, it's got three different positions for the focus limiter. You can do the full travel. You can do minimum focus distance to minimum focus distance to 10 meters or 10 meters to infinity. So uh, that will speed things up. You got your, everybody has a different name for vibration reduction. That's what Nikon calls it and 
Canon calls it image stabilization and Sony calls it optical steady shot. So they need three letters to describe there. So they've got uh, optical steady shot on and off. And then there's three modes, which I better exactly like the, uh, the Canon modes one, two, and three. So it looks pretty good. It feels pretty good. Uh, these, you know, I've, this is the first Sony lens cap I've ever fooled with. And honestly, I mean, it's pretty good. I like that you can kind of put it on anywhere. You don't have to line it up like the new Canon R lens caps have to be done, but it's still a little bit clunky to me. I kind of think Nikon lens caps may be the best, although I'm having trouble getting that one off. You know, you just put it on anywhere you want and turn it and it's good to go. And that's kind of the way the Sony is. The, the, the Canon R mount are the worst because you have to line it up. You can't just put it on anywhere and twist it. You have to line it up right and then put it on and twist it. But you know, I'll get used to that. It's almost as good as this and definitely better than the Canon. But I'm excited about, about using this. I can't wait till that camera gets here, but I need your help because I, I, I mean, I would probably use this lens just like this lens on the Canon system. I'll probably use this lens more than anything else on that camera, but I still need to, I, I still want to get a, uh, a mid range zoom, something that's like 24 to 70 full frame equivalent. And I want to get an ultra wide so I can try out the Sony for landscape photography and maybe even some sports photography. So some of the lenses I'm considering, there's the Tamron, they make an, a uh, 35 to 150, which is a zoom lens, obviously, and it's variable aperture, but the aperture is F2 on the wide end to F2.8 on the long end. So that is, that's a really unique lens and I'm probably gonna get one of those one day. Might be a good basketball lens. But another lens I'm considering is made by Sigma. It's a, they make an 18 to 50, which is 27, I think, to 75 full frame equivalent. Sony cameras have a 1.5 crop like a Nikon. They don't have the 1.6 crop like the Canon camera does. So the math is pretty easy. But anyway, I think it's 27 to 75 full frame equivalent, this Sigma lens, and it's 2.8 and it's tiny. It doesn't have stabilization, optical steady shot, but I think that might be pretty cool. And another lens I'm looking at, Sony makes an 11 millimeter, which would be 16 and a half millimeters full frame equivalent, F1.8 lens for APS-C that I'm considering. And they also make a 10, which would be 15 to 20 power zoom. Uh, it's an F4 lens. So I'm kind of considering those two for ultra wide. So if you have, if you're a Sony shooter and you've got suggestions for lenses to, uh, for sports and all around to use on a, on an APS-C body, uh, let me know in the comments. I'd be really interested to hear what you think. And uh, don't be mad at me, Canon shooters. A, a lot of the Nikon, when I, because of my camera, my channel used to be exclusively Nikon. And when I started shooting some Canon, man, some of those guys got really mad. Uh, please don't be mad at me. I'm just a guy who likes cameras. Uh, I'm, I'm not loyal to a specific brand. Uh, I like to, I think it's interesting to me and maybe it will be interesting to you to look at a lot of brands and see how they work. That way I can, you know, cause sometimes people ask me a question, well, what do you think about the Sony? Well, I don't know, I've never shot with one. Well, soon I will know what I think about the Sony and I'll be able to answer that question. Maybe one day I might even look at the Olympus system. They've got that OM-1 camera that looks fantastic. I might even do some micro four thirds someday, but that'll be, that'll be a little ways down the road. This year, I'm gonna investigate Sony and see what it's all about. But again, I'll continue to shoot with the Canon. And let me tell you something about, you know, cause Heather's on this channel, probably somewhere between 30 and 50% of the videos, Heather comes out and she shoots with me and she, I'm, I'm right eyed. And the A6700 has the viewfinder up here in the top corner, like a rangefinder camera. So for me, that will be great because that my nose will not be hitting the screen. 
and uh, making adjustments on the touchscreen. But for Heather, she is left-eyed. So she would have to shoot like this, which would be even more likely for her face to hit the screen. So I don't see her changing to Sony. Uh, so she'll still be using this. And, and also Heather, you know, she's, I'm a great big man. She's a, she's a small woman. Uh, also, she has a, a slight neurological disorder. So the fact that this 100 to 500 is so small and so light is really great for her. So this, this lens would definitely be better for Heather. This lens, because it's a little, it's a third of a stop faster and it has hundred extra millimeters, might be better for me, but not in all situations. Like Heather and I were talking about when we get married and we're going to Canada, I'm not taking this to Canada. Not when I could travel with this thing that's just about, you know, it, it, it's fantastic and is much, much smaller, much lighter, much easier to pack. So as far as like travel, if you need a, a great telephoto lens to travel, this is it. For example, I have, I use a 200 size low pro bag that this fits in. If I wanna take this lens, I have to switch to my 300 size low pro bag. Also, I have the, the 800 millimeter F11. That's something that's, that's not available on Sony. You can't get something like that on Sony. So there's an advantage Canon. It will fit in the 300 bag. But this lens with its internal zoom, so it never gets smaller than its biggest size and it never gets bigger than its smallest size. It takes up more room in the bag. It'll almost, I mean, it'll fit in my 300 size bag without a camera body on it. But I feel like it's gonna be really smashed in there when my camera gets here. So I'm gonna to have to use a larger bag than my regular bags to carry this lens. So that's something to think about. You know, it'll, of course the lens hood will go on backwards just like all lens hoods do, but it's still bigger. Noticeably bigger. So there's something to think about. But like I say, give me some help on suggestions on some Sony lenses to use with this. And, and uh, don't be mad if you're a Canon shooter that I'm experimenting with Sony and uh, I can't wait till that camera comes in. I'll have a lot of content with it. The A6700 with its AI autofocus chip. You know, it has, uh, it has a, a slow frame rate. So the other day, uh, a couple weeks ago, Heather and I were shooting great crested flycatchers flying into the nest and we weren't even using autofocus. We were just focusing on the birdhouse that they were flying into and we used the we use the R7 30 frames per second mode, which I normally don't like that super fast mode. But for that situation, it was definitely the way to go. Well, the A6700 only shoots 11 frames per second. So each of the systems will probably have its advantages and disadvantages. And that's another one to think about. But anyway, I guess I've rambled on long enough and I appreciate you tuning into this video for me to try to explain what I was thinking when I bought this Sony 200 to 600 millimeter lens. Give me a thumbs up if you like the content, subscribe, hit the bell if you wanna see some more. And as always, I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Bye-bye. Look at this box it came in. Go Vols.